Well, tomorrow marks the one year anniversary of the deadly and devastating tornado in Joplin, Missouri. It's been a long year of healing for the people, and if you ask anyone in town, they'll tell you their progress would not have been possible without the help of so many volunteers. Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Megan Polera traveled to Joplin to show us how those volunteers are changing lives. There are two groups of volunteers, those who traveled far and wide and those who lived through the EF5 tornado. Tonight we meet some of those survivors originally from the Lincoln area who became a ray of hope for so many victims. The image is still vivid. This complex is that one is totally gone and the other ones are badly damaged. The scars still fresh. Last summer was uh, really kind of a living help. The devastation still very real. I got a call back and just said, get down here now. May 22nd, 2011, a day that will forever mark the city of Joplin. An EF5 tornado had ripped through the town, flattening an entire third of it. 161 people killed, 7,000 homes, 18,000 vehicles, 39 churches, and a major hospital all gone. This has been our life for a long time. As Kate Locke drives around town, she shows me the path of destruction as if completely unfazed by it all. I see the progress. I see what will be. Locke, originally from Fairbury, has been hands on in the rebuilding process, along with her other Nebraska friends, Angela Grantham, also a Fairbury native, and Dr. Gabriel Klein, who used to live in Lincoln. Locke started a scrub drive that ended just three weeks ago collecting more than 4,000 scrubs for the medical community. And in the process, got to meet some remarkable people that went through things you don't go through in war time. Dr. Klein, a child psychologist who drove in from Springfield after the twister hit, worked with the triage unit. They wanted to get better and, and, and not, not wait for someone else to come and help them. They started right away that that night they started doing what they could to get better and Grantham the wife of an oncologist at St. John's Hospital put herself to work in the emergency room it was just complete chaos and the people they were just in shock on this day they're in a city park rebuilt with a section designed entirely for the volunteers volunteers and hometown heroes like themselves in the background the ruins are still visible it's an overwhelming sight for any visitor and a hard truth for those who live it every day. Our reality has changed so much. Now you'll say, well, I only lost my house and my car, but I'm okay. Or I was only buried for three hours and I'm okay. Reality may have changed, but the city's sense of hope and pride has only gotten stronger. Tattered and torn flags still fly proudly. Piles of rubble are surrounded by words of encouragement the steel beams of a cross still standing tall. It's been a year of healing for the people of Joplin, a city that may be down, but not out. Hopefully we'll give the people that still need help, we'll give them hope. And Joplin may have come a long way in the year since the tornado struck, but there is still a lot of work. Tomorrow night, we'll meet a church group from Lincoln that has spent the past year helping to rebuild, making 15 trips with more than 300 volunteers. Today marks exactly one year since a deadly tornado tore through Joplin. Ceremonies were held today to remember those who died and to celebrate the rebuilding process. It's something that would not have been possible without the thousands of volunteers. Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Megan Palera traveled to Joplin with some of those volunteers, a Lincoln Church group. Megan? For the past year, Crossbridge Christian Church has been helping with the cleanup and rebuilding process in Joplin. They've touched countless lives and in the process made a lasting impact that will forever give back to the people of Joplin. The sky is the limit for the Crossbridge Disaster Relief Team. Two, three. A Lincoln Church group getting dirty for Jesus. The task at hand, tearing down a house destroyed by a fire. A project the group is familiar with. They've been tearing down and rebuilding Joplin for the past year. Ralph Vega was one of the first to make the trip last May. Joplin really got hold of my heart when I came down here and saw the, the need. That need was insurmountable. The EF5 tornado killed 161 people and flattened an entire third of the town. 
St. John's Hospital, one of two in the city, was completely destroyed. The Crossbridge Group is familiar with disaster relief responding to the south after hurricanes Irene and Katrina. But when tragedy struck Joplin, missions coordinator Vern Schulte says it was love that came from all the pain. The community of Joplin really came together and, and embraced all of all of all and any of the help that uh, that we were able to provide. That help meant 15 trips and more than 300 volunteers over the past year. The smallest group two, the largest 150. Our youngest is probably 10 years old, all the way up to 89 is our oldest. Their mission was simple, mend the broken hearts one at a time. They partnered with a sister church and in addition to helping the community at large, built the station. They transformed this Kwanzaa hut used as a gym into a volunteer shelter that can house 36 people. It also includes a kitchen, living area, and bathrooms and showers. And in the bedrooms are the bunks. It only took nine months to build, and to the group's amazement, is completely booked through the end of the year. If we hadn't been sent here uh, to respond to this disaster and to be his hands and feet, this never would have happened. Even long after the Crossbridge Disaster Relief Team leaves Joplin, they'll continue to serve the area through the station, a lasting impact. But the work in Joplin is far from over. The rubble still in piles, the scars still visible, a community still hurting. So the church group continues to give and will continue until they're no longer needed because they know how much the town is counting on them. Even today, a year later, we're out working in the community and we have people who drive by who have nothing to do with the project that we're with saying thank you for coming. And I'm so grateful. I can't thank them enough for what they've done for us here in Joplin. And I know there's going to be more. Now, as I said, the need in Joplin is still great, and there are ways to help other than traveling. There are bracelets for Joplin like this one here, or there are shirts that say, I am volunteer Joplin, and all you have to do is purchase them, and all the funds help to rebuild the city, something small that can leave a very big impact. And most of the organizations have Facebook pages you can access for more information.